Hey everybody, so I just got news that my local dealership has a Bronco that I can go get my hands on. I can go do a walk around, so I'm in a real hurry. I gotta put the pedal to the metal and get to that dealership as fast as possible. Johnny here for Johnny's Car Care and Review. So I'm gonna be behind the camera today reviewing this Big Ben that I had in my hand. So this is my local dealership's very first Bronco to arrive and it is pretty impressive. Now I'm gonna be talking this in this video about size comparison because I've got an F-150 right there. Uh, so, and who doesn't like talking size and comparing sizes. So we're gonna go ahead and do that. We're gonna be talking all, all about the points that have been worrying people and stressing people out, like, you know, pre-rusted uh, differentials. Uh, we're also gonna be talking about hard tops, a little bit about suspension, and you know, we're just gonna be doing an overall walk around review. I wanna put some concerns and stresses to bed, offer some solutions, and also just show you this beautiful machine because it, it was actually pretty exciting having this in my hands today. I had the keys, I was in, out, I've got you know a bit of motor running at the end. So let's just put the pedal to the metal, jump right in, and see what we've got on our hands today. Okay, so let's start with the front end. I'm actually really surprised. I thought that the base model and Big Bend would look a little cheap without having the signature LED lights. Those are the lights that go around the LED light. Because remember, all Broncos have LED lights, which was pretty cool on Ford's part to provide all models with LEDs. But I thought it would look a little cheap. But having this in the flesh and the person, I can see that the grill actually looks pretty high end. Uh, the grill fits in perfectly with you know, pretty much all the colors, I think. Now this one has modular front bumper. I suggest the getting the steel bumper if you're getting a big bend, just because it adds a lot of look and it also makes the machine a little bit more off-road. Now the front grill does have that active uh, grill shutter in both the top and bottom of the grill. So you've got little vents that open and close to help with you know, heating of the engine and releasing the heat as well as just being more aerodynamic, but hey, let's be honest, this thing is less aerodynamic than a cow, so, and, and you know, we can tell, we can tell by the miles per gallon, so even these little technological tricks that cost a fortune if you do get an fender bender um, to fix, that's the active grill, uh, shutter, opening and closing, it's a fortune if you've gotta switch that, um, and if you do, Oh gosh, this is why insurances cost so much. They barely shave any points off miles per gallon, especially with a big, beautiful square box as this. But what can you do? That's what Ford's given us. But here's a little tip and trick. What you can do is get the steel bumper because that's gonna save you all sorts of you know, bumper swaps and insurance claims. That steel bumper is tough. I was knocking on it pretty hard and it is well built. Now, just to do a quick little size comparison, this thing is huge. And actually part of the reason I got a Badlands is because I thought you know, anything under Badlands would be too small. You know, I was looking at the st stats sheet from the Ford Media spec sheet and seeing that a Badlands can be up to three and almost three inches taller than certain base models. Uh, I, I thought I had to have the Badlands. I thought I needed the look of those aggressive tires, but you know what? This big bend is pretty awesome. You've got all these really cool accessory uh, ready points, you know, just little Easter eggs, uh, because obviously we know those caps can be lifted, but it's cool that, you know, just Ford put Easter eggs with, you know, Bronco logos and, you know, made this look as modular as possible, even when it comes down to the stickers. Now, I am zooming in here on the roof just to show you that not all roofs that get delivered are faulty. Uh, Webasto is pushing out as many roofs as possible, and I'm wondering if part of the reason they're having issues is because they're just sending them to Ford too quickly. So yeah, there is tape on this window, and I'm thinking that's because it's missing. Um, you know, they probably put it there to help the glue settle. So they probably put the tape on while the glue was still settling and just shipped it directly to the Ford and they didn't want that vibrating, moving around and losing the window uh, in shipping. So I think they put the tape on there to keep the window in place, but that's no big deal. Once these things get to dealerships, uh, everything gets done to make this perfect. And if ever you do get a Bronco that's delivered that isn't perfect, remember this 
thing is warrantied for three years or you know 60,000 kilometers I'll have to translate that into miles but you've got three years basically to let Ford know what's wrong with your Bronco and they're gonna go ahead and fix it now let's just talk size for a moment the size of this Bronco is huge even though it's a big bend it doesn't have Sasquatch it more than does the job. This thing parked beside this F-150, and come on, F-150s are pretty big trucks these days. They're way bigger than they were back in the 90s. You know, they must be sitting a foot higher than they were back in the late 90s. That Bronco is sitting almost as high as an F-150, and it's only the Big Ben model. Just to remind you, the Big Ben model is the second trim level. So you've got the first trim level being the base, the Big Ben being the second trim lot level, and you could add Sasquatch to any of the models. Models. But, you know, if you're just thinking of look and not off-road, why would you? This Big Ben, to have more of an aggressive look, just needs more aggressive tires. It's already wide, it's already high, it looks wider than the F-150, it almost looks as high as the F-150, and that was really one of the points that I loved about getting my hands on this Bronco today, is that it really surprised me. It uh, completely rattled me because I've spent all sorts of money or I'm going to be spending all sorts of money on a Badlands because I wanted a big mean machine to do occasional off-roading for, you know, for the channel. And I probably could have done it with a Big Ben with some very aggressive tires. So what can you do? We live and we learn. I'm here to be helpful and I'll be honest and open about my mistakes to help you not make the same mistakes that I'm making uh, and that I have made in the past. So let's jump right into the interior and look at this awesome interior interior. And I'm also going to cover a few of my dislikes because there are some dislikes, but let's get right to that. So usually manufacturers make you feel pretty cheap and poor for not buying the fully equipped model or the model right underneath the fully equipped model. But hey, Ford did a great job. This is the second lowest trim and I really do recommend a Big Ben. I love this thing. I'm kind of wishing it's what I would have gotten. It's got an amazing screen behind the steering wheel, uh, making the vehicle look, you know, right off the first impression. I open the door, I look at the screen. I feel like this is more of a luxury vehicle. Now, of course, the plastics in the door did not give me that impression, but the screen certainly does. It's effective. It's useful. It looks good. It's sharp. Uh, big points for Ford on this one. They threw it all at us. The whole kitchen sink, um, giving us something that's great on an entry level trim. So you've got all sorts of information in there as you see it go by. You know, you've got your miles per gallon. You've even got your pitch and your roll for when you're off-roading. You can know exactly what angles you're on. And actually Ford uses the, all that information in the computer system to help keep you in a straight line. So you've got, you know, an amazing uh, stability control system. It's fantastic in the snow. Even on a Mustang, I've driven three winters with a uh, Mustang and hey, I've done all the snowstorms in a Mustang and Ford's tech keeps you in a straight line. It's great. Now these buttons, let's get to these buttons. They are awesome. Uh, not only do they appear to be pretty darn waterproof, uh, they also have a really good touch to them. Every button and knob in this vehicle has sort of like a meaty feeling to it. I really liked it. Like these knobs here, I'm turning, it's got a meaty feel. It clicks in between each one and it doesn't feel plasticky when you turn it. Unlike those doors, the doors definitely do feel plasticky, except Except for where you put your elbow. I'll get to that in a moment, but all these buttons were just great. The overall assembly of this vehicle is awesome. You know, everyone at the Michigan assembly plant at MAP has done an amazing job. The whole hard top issue is not their responsibility. It's not their fault. I can say 95% of this vehicle is a 10 out of 10. I'm blown away. I absolutely love it. Uh, everyone at the Michigan assembly plant has done an awesome job. These buttons up here, you know, you've got the trail turn assist. That's where your rear inner wheel locks to help you turn even more so. It's got a meaty, thunk feel to it plus it's pretty darn waterproof now let's talk about a bit of the bad news the top now the roofs are causing all sorts of problems because Webasto can only create about a third of what Ford needs every day so you know Ford's currently pumping out 
300 Broncos a day, they're gonna be able to kick that up to 600 and even, you know, come early next year, 900 per day, or maybe even late this year. And Webasto is having trouble putting out 100 per day. They're really throwing these things together quickly. And well, the result is that, you know, we've seen it on Bronco 6G. We've got some tops that got have issues that the plastic didn't quite leave, quite completely go around the shell. And I was pretty worried because it looked like the, the shell would be made of cardboard covered in plastic. But later on in the video, you'll see, I actually give a good punch, several punches to the hard top to see if it really is a hard top or not. And I can confirm, uh, sorry to break the surprise early, but it is really a hard top, it's solid. Um, except you'll see in just a moment, um, I'm gonna be really going through all this. You know, we can see all the accessories here, but the roof, the little headliner, the sound deadening headliner, which is now free because of the delays, Ford threw that in, originally it was $500, now it's free. Well, it's not perfect. And here's a solution, don't touch it, because if you do touch it, this thing's got bad dandruff. It's got a case of bad dandruff, and it's not the end of the world. I've had dandruff before, who hasn't? Let's not, you know, get our, get our whatever in a bundle, uh, our undies in a, in a bundle. Uh, it's not the end of the world, but it is reason to consider getting a soft top. You know, you could switch to a soft top now to try to get your Bronco sooner. It will work, it did work for me. I'm getting my Bronco. I jumped the list. Um, it's being built now August 25th because I switched to a soft top and later on I can get a quality hard top because Let's face it, I put my hands on this and Wubasto has made us an okay hardtop. It's solid, it can take a pounding, but you know that headliner when I rub my hands across it, it's got bad dandruff. Some of these things are coming out with faults and of course, you know, I'm sure Ford's gonna cover that under warranty and you'll eventually get a different hardtop if you do have a hardtop that's been, you know, not completely plasticized, you could see say. So that means at the seams, you can sort of see the inner, cardboard like material but either way this thing is hard and now enough about hard tops that's sort of the depressing subject of the week let's vote get back to some positive stuff and then we can talk a little bit more about the negative stuff this thing's awesome this thing's mirrors you know they remind you that it's an accessory that you could remove the mirrors everything is completely modular the doors open and close it is you know it, they open and close with a little bit of a clank. You can really feel that, you know, they're nice, heavy, thick, well-insulated doors. Now, you got this little netting here that's pretty cool. Well, the handle's a little plasticky. And, well, the whole paneling is really plasticky. But remember, this is an off-road machine meant to get wet. And these doors are meant to be taken off and left in your garage. Ideally, do get the bags, as you saw when I was reviewing the back end of the vehicle. And for more useful advice, these relatively small 255 tires, uh, they don't look very aggressive, but they're really good for helping you to get better miles per gallon because if you do stick on an extra inch of tire, you're gonna lose about one mile per gallon per inch of tire. That's the general rule. Um, so the Big Bend, it's got, you know, kind of small tires, it kind of irks me, but it's there to help you get better miles per gallon. Now let's jump right into the vehicle. Uh, opening the door, you can tell that the door is well insulated. It's thick, it's got a little weight weightiness to it. The handles, everything feels pretty good. Here, you know, the lock button feels a little plasticky, but when are you really gonna push, pull that with your hand? The net's really great, but the handle is pretty plasticky. The whole backing is extremely plasticky, but those are areas you're not gonna test, really touch. Of course, journalists are gonna go wild about this in you know a couple weeks, maybe a, maybe even up to a month. But when they fully review, when they're done saying all their positive stuff, they're gonna pull out all their negative reviews and they're gonna tear this thing apart for being plasticky. But I've gotta say the interior actually looks amazing. Yeah, the door paneling where you don't touch is plasticky, but the seats look and feel great. They're extremely comfortable. The seating position is absolutely fantastic. When you sit in this Bronco, you feel like you're king of the hill, like you're the big boss. Um, that's why I'm kind of hoping uh, they throw on the boss name to any Shelby or, you know, Shelby product that they make out of this. Hopefully they'll throw in a V8 and call it the Boss 302 and have a five liter turbo. Maybe a little more likely to have a 6.8 or a 7.3. But uh, yeah, the Bronco, it's, uh, it's large and in charge. Uh, the buttons, feel great. I feel that in regards to Ford products, this is way better than what we were getting from Ford in the 90s and 2000s. Everything that you touch 
like this knob for the shifter or the too high, four high button or the four low, which if you know, that's good if you're going under about 15 miles per hour. All of that feels meaty, chunky. Uh, it feels mechanical, but kind of smooth, but without being too smooth at the same time. It, it, it actually feels like it's mechanical and not just, you know, these digital buttons. This doesn't feel like, let's say, a Walkman or for people that don't know what a Walkman is, a CD player. These buttons don't feel cheap and plasticky. Um, where you don't touch, it is plastic. You know, they've got to save money somewhere. But where you do touch, like the armrest, this thing is super cushiony. Right above, you don't put your arm there. So yeah, it's a plastic, but it's not the end of the world. This thing is meant to go off road. So, you know, the more plastic you have, the more waterproof it is. So it's not the end of the world. But really, my big surprise of the day were the lights and the grill. Ford's offering a second trim level the second lowest trim level, and it looks amazing. It feels great. The inside doesn't feel cheap. The outside doesn't feel cheap. The tires are less aggressive, but for anyone who wants to daily drive this and do a decent amount of mileage with it, you're gonna be really happy with those tires getting you, well, relatively kind of bad miles per gallon fuel economy, but a whole lot better than if you were to throw on, you know, some monster tires on it. So not the end of the world. Now, something I really do recommend when it comes to accessories, you know, are running boards. Running boards to help you get in and out of the vehicle. This thing is actually pretty high up, so if you've got a bad knee or a bad back, or if you're shorter than five foot 10, get running boards on this. If you're gonna off-road this, get some serious uh, running boards on the side that are rock, you know, rock guards. So get something for the sides the vehicle in its base form as you saw in the in the film right there looks just a little cheap when you can see you know so the bolts and the rivets underneath now you're, you're not always going to be looking there but if you're a perfectionist like me it's going to get on your nerves but it's not a big deal it can be resolved and whether you get your rock protectors your rock guards from ford or aftermarket there's all sorts of options Ford did this smart. Of course, you can take the doors off this model. So all the up and down window buttons are on the center console. Now we've got the engine here. So I guess I'll have to talk a little bit louder. This is the 2.3 liter four cylinder engine, which is already proven in the Ford Ranger and Explorer. It is a good, powerful engine. And it is really bothering me that people are saying like, hey, you can get a manual Jeep six cylinder. This thing's more powerful than Jeep six cylinder. This thing's better than Jeep six cylinder and it already has that air entry at a high level. which is just smart on Ford's part because obviously they realized we're gonna be running this thing through some pretty big puddles. Now do keep in mind when you're going through big puddles, don't get those that one hot turbo wet. Uh, that's a great way to possibly crack uh, your, your turbo if it's real hot, so don't race around and then jump into four feet of water. Take notice of how much water Ford allows you for water fording, so look at the media spec sheet, but that air intake is high, smart move. This is a straight four cylinder turboed engine, generally tur uh, straight, st straight inline engines are very long lasting and reliable. So just do your oil changes on a regular basis and you should be fine. Now there was a lot of concern about rusty diffs back four months ago, but hey, look, there were a few F-150s that got a bad batch of diffs that didn't get painted before they started rusting. But here we can see that the Bronco's diff and underbelly is not pre-rusted. You're not buying a rusty Bronco. Uh, just like the whole hard top issue, Webasto is pushing out way more tops than they safely can, and these are early model issues. These will get worked out, so you don't have to switch to a soft top to fix your problems. But I do recommend that if you wanna get your Bronco sooner, do switch to a soft top. Get your awesome soft top. As of September 1st, all builds will have all the wiring and plumbing for you know your back window heating and windshield wiper fluid. And from there, you can get either a Ford or aftermarket hard top. It can be color matched, it can be thicker, it can be better. And you know, you'll be on the trails with me that much sooner. Now, this was one of our first allotments. It was about allotment number six. 
but just a reminder, taking a 2.3 liter does help get your Bronco sooner because 2.7 liters, uh, I'm gonna be doing a full video on this using a proper sheet for proof, and that's a sheet that shows you all the probabilities of getting your Bronco based on equipment. But this thing has the hitch, which isn't the best to have on your Bronco. You better take your hitch off and add it at factory because I've gone through the towing guide and there's no asterisks beside towing capacity saying it has to be a hitch from factory, which would mean that there'd be an oil coolant for the transmission and a larger radiator. So it seems that all Broncos are built equally when it comes to towing, even if you don't get the tow package. It's really not a tow package, it's just, you know, the towing metal, the, the, the back hitch. So you can do that after the fact uh, to get your Bronco sooner. You can definitely switch to a soft top to get your Bronco sooner and just get a hard top later. Um, but either way, you're gonna love your Bronco. Please don't cancel your Bronco just because of this hard top bad news where we saw that it appears like it would be thin and vulnerable and just made of cheap plastic. This thing was large and in charge. Uh, it's really practical. Everywhere you put your, you're gonna be touching, you're gonna be turning, you're gonna be pulling on. It all feels very high end. Now, of course, there are, there is some cost cutting in certain places, and that's really just comes down to the door plastic. Uh, the roof, the that free headliner, uh, it does have a little bit of a dandruff problem if you are gonna be rubbing it, but honestly, how often are you gonna be rubbing your roof? Uh, now, of course, it will slowly, um, you know, kind of, rub off as you take your top off and on if you are rubbing that headliner but you know what solution just don't uh i think the 2.3 is going to be more than enough power because i've tested it in a ford ranger i've also tested it in an explorer and you have to be a pretty hungry power hungry guy like me to want more power and if so you've probably already ordered the 2.7 like about 20 uh, 70 percent of bronco orders were 2.7s so it seems like there's a whole lot of us looking for more power and i'm also looking for more sound so i am hoping that there'll be a v8 that'll come out from shelby or in the raptor highly doubted on the raptor i think that's going to be an ecoboost hybrid but overall you know just to conclude this video this was a very impressive product uh, the map factory put together and assembled an awesome product it's 95 percent perfect i gotta say it the roof isn't quite living up to hopes and dreams it's decent it's okay it's not gonna cause you any major issues. And if it does come with defects, or if after three, four weeks, defects come out, just remember that's gonna be warrantied. Just like that one Bronco uh, that's circulating on the net that had a suspension issue, that's also gonna be covered by Ford. These things happen uh, whether you're in your first year or fourth year of production. So in the meantime, I really do hope this video has helped you be a little less anxious, a little less worried about your Bronco product. And I do want to remind you that even if you ordered a base or a big bend, you know, you're getting a big mean machine. If you've ordered a black diamond, uh, you're getting a slightly bigger machine. And if you've ordered either a Sasquatch package, Wild Track first edition or Badlands, you're not just getting a big machine, you are getting a huge machine. This thing is, it's not gonna tower over an F-150, but it's gonna be really level with an F-150. Now, if you have gotten a Black Diamond, uh, you're gonna, or, you know, or a Sasquatch or a Wild Track, you're gonna be getting those Bilstein shocks. Um, they're position sensitive shocks, so they're going to be great on road, bad roads, you know, bad public roads, and they're just going to be amazing off road. So if you haven't already done it and you're starting to think that you're going to off road pretty heavily this machine, I do suggest you get at least the steel bash, uh, steel bumper with the steel bash plates underneath. And you know, if you're gonna be doing any, you know, pretty darn heavy off-roading, go for the Bilstein shocks. Get uh, either add Sasquatch package, uh, but that will slow down the arrival of your Bronco. But either get Sasquatch package or throw on a Badlands because the Badlands has the Haas suspension system it has the bilstein shocks and remember the badlands is the only model that has stabilizer bar disconnect which is really great for get getting extra articulation and having you know 
having kind of that best of both worlds between on-road comfort and you know Jeep quality off-roading. So steel bumper it all the way. Even if you're not gonna off-road, this thing's gonna protect you if you hit any uh, hit anything on the road, if you bump into any cement walls, as Marie did with the Mustang just recently. And in the meantime, I'm just gonna remind you all how much I love the Big Ben, despite thinking that a low level trim would not impress me. This thing impressed me 10 out of 10. Uh, I got the jitters, I got real excited. This thing is pretty awesome. So in the meantime, I wish you all more cars and more power. I hope you get to put it the pe I hope you get to put the pedal to the metal this week. And while well, next video Winston, my co-host will be back, so stay tuned. Please like and subscribe to help us out. 